Griffin, guess what? What? This episode of The Breakfast Dish is sponsored by ATB. Do you know Wait, what ATB stands for? We have ads now? Oh, my God. We have ads because we're part of the Alberta Podcast Network. Well, here's a little secret. I am actually – I do know what ATB is because I'm, I'm, I'm with them. I have a debit card, so this is conflict of interest. Okay, so let me tell you. You were born okay. in 1996, and I was born in 1966, and ATB was opened in 1938. And their entire job then was to support Albertans during hard times. Are we in hard times right now? Yeah. Are they still going to help us? Yeah, they are. Because they've got a Bill to Help Albertans campaign, and they're going to help Albertans recover from the effects of COVID. This is a downturn. It's not over. But ATB was built to help Albertans like you and like me. So ATB is here to answer the hard questions. Yeah. Any hard questions that right, okay. you might have as an ATB account holder. Uh, so I'll go to my bank and go... Where do babies come from? That's great. Yep. And sorry, you, what you're saying is you, you'll promise me that they'll answer those. Well, they say they'll answer commonly asked questions. Well, I don't know where babies come from. That's pretty common. Yeah, maybe not of my age group, but they won't judge. ATB is great. Ask them anything. They're going to help you because because we need the help. Tell me your dreams over bacon and eggs. We'll share a laugh and a story and On the breakfast dish. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to episode sixty five of the breakfast dish. This podcast that covers arts happening online and in person in Alberta that I host. With my son, Griffin Cork. My name's Karen Johnson Diamond. Mother, it's time. Get me a chalky milk. Hi there, Breakfast Dish listeners. We, we, don't, um, we don't ever record in the same house very often, but we are in different rooms of my uncle's house in Edmonton at the moment. Okay, well, I'm coming upstairs in a second to bring you your chalky milk. No, don't, don't, don't. Not in front <laughs> of Alex. Let me see if Karen's mic can pick up my mic. Hold on one second. I, I yelled real loud, and I'm sure the two pets in this house didn't like that. So bad experiment, Griffin. I shared this with somebody the other day. We were talking about, like, how do you like the sound of your own voice when you're listening to it or whatever. And my college theater professor told me that my voice could knock a buzzard off a shit wagon. So that's what I've always stuck by. Which is kind of a crazy thing to say to an emerging theater artist, like someone who's in school and working on their craft and discovering who their identity is. Imagine having that said to you. That's nuts. You know what, though? He loved me. I loved him. It was it, it was sarcastic at the time. Like he, he wasn't actually saying it, but it was probably something I did in some show that sounded awful. And it was just one moment that my voice could have knocked a buzzard off a shit wagon. But I've I've lived on that forever. Was he talking about your talking voice or your singing voice? Probably both. <laughs> oh my god, that's not okay. Very few people have heard my singing voice, but our guest is one of them. Yes, I have, and it's not buzzard off a shit wagon. Bad. <laughs> it's not bad at all. That's right. I was going to say the same thing. <laughs> hey, Griffin, introduce our wonderful guest, you, my son. Well, if if you've been listening to The Breakfast Dish up at this point, you know this person's name. Uh, I say it uh, sometimes too fast at the end of every outro of every episode because the intro music that you just heard and the outro music that you're about to hear in about half an hour to 45 minutes has been composed by... Alexandra Cowman! Hey, tell me your dreams over bacon and eggs! Oh, have we told you? Do you know about the segment that we've made because of that? No. Oh, okay, we'll get to it, we'll get to we'll it, we'll get, get to, to it. it. it that's, an, that's an end of episode thing. Hey, Alex, you just opened a show last night, and here it is in the morning, and you've probably been up partying on stage and off, and you're still with us, <laughs> yes. and you're here in the morning, and we adore you. <laughs> Tell us about your opening and your show. Oh, it was so good. Uh, yeah, so much partying. I mean, the show is called Alberta Kitchen Party, so we we really so they're damn better. We be. Party hard with those with all the alcohol on stage that is not real and is just water that we're like <laughs> frantically downing <laughs> during the show. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> you should see how fast I can drink a cider uh, when it's just water. <laughs> um, but the opening went wonderful. It was a room full of friends and, and arts people, uh, all in the community. And, uh, 
the artistic director Rohit told everybody to to hoot and holler, and and they said challenge accepted, and they just spoiled us with their love, and it was so great, and ah, I just felt like wrapped up in a warm hug for the whole show. It was wonderful. And we're talking uh, Rohit, who is the artistic director of Alberta Theatre Projects. Is uh, Rohit going to do a pre-show chat before every show and encourage people? I hope so, because his pre-show chats are really good. Marcy's are really good, too. Uh, But they each have their own, like, quirks and quirks to each of them. Hers is a little bit more like, here's the deal, folks. And Rohit's (laughs) like, are you ready to party? (laughs) Put your hands up! Yeah! (laughs) That's something that ATP started doing, whatever, four or five years ago. And I think Citadel does it, too. And I really really like it when when there's kind of, like, a cycling of, like, the office staff. When you kind of get to meet, like, everybody behind the scenes. Yeah, yeah. It's a good time. Marcy Janiska is the new producer at ATP. She's well known to the Calgary and Edmonton and Toronto and Red Deer community. So in terms of this uh, kitchen party, and you were in the kind of beginning stages of like creating the show, like from the ground up. Am I right about that? Yes. Yeah. So uh, June 2020, way back. um, Whoa. Yeah. Darcy Evans, the late and great, uh, phoned me and said, hey, the one of our show's slots have just been canceled. Like the tour that was coming in has been canceled. I want to replace it with this show uh, about young emerging artists and all of their struggles and triumphs. And I want it to be um, one of the shows where, where actors play their own instruments and we, we get a little bit of a cabaret out of it as well. And so uh, I was a part of that initial group of people and we had – uh, a couple of workshops, and then unfortunately, Darcy passed away, um, and we got to keep going, um, which was just just brilliant. And people have come and gone from the project, but uh, it, it's just incredible to finally, a year and a half later, actually have opened the show, because there were so many moments where we were like, is this going to happen? I don't know. Are we coming back? I don't know. So... It's been really special. I think it's very interesting that the show circling around the triumphs and trials of being an emerging artist, even its debut, (laughs) had (laughs) some complications. I think that's very uh, uh, on the nose. Yeah, I never thought of it that way, but it's very true, you know? And, like, I think at the end of it all, like, we just decided to to make a show that was full of joy. Um, and, and you know, the rehearsal process was so full of joy because we were so on about that. And then, like, the sense of fun and play, like, all of, all of what young, scrappy artists are kind of came out and bubbled through in, in the creation of the show. And hopefully that made it up on stage and it was just, it's just been a good time. Do you have uh, the names of all the performers in the show? Mm. Oh, yeah, for sure. We do a whole rap at the top of the show where <gasps> we say all their names. So I know it like the back of my hand. Do it. We, do it. We no, got... don't, no, we don't have to do it. I, I mean, I want people to buy tickets to the show and then go. Then okay, proceed. all right. <laughs> I'll give you a preview. Um, we got Daniel Fong is how I say that name. And then <laughs> Alex Cowman, that's me. Um, and then Cody Rollian. And then oh. Anna Dalgleish. And JCJ, also known as Jeremy Carver James. And finally, Joe Yo on the piano. Oh. <laughs> And that's Joe Slavey, Artistic Director yeah. of Forte Musical Theatre, because this is a co-pro between ATP and Forte Musical Theatre. Am I right? That's right. You got it. I think, I think <laughs> you know, when you see Instagram ads and there's about an album or it's about a rap album and they do little snippets of songs and be like, <laughs> this album's featuring this song. I think oh, it yeah. should just. Every album advertisement is to just have one word that is said in every rap song. And they're like, here's all the different ways this rapper says uh, uh, cars and money. Cars and money. Cars and money. 
I love the preview of this is how I say their names. Yes. It's very important. <laughs> You'll have to come to the show to get all the rest of it. Oh. <laughs> One getting their song name songed. One getting their name sung is a, is a pleasure. One getting their name song sung. <laughs> Would you like me to sing your name now to you? Griffin Cork. Did you yeah. have a, no. sorry, did you have a song about my name when I was growing up or something? Uh, I don't Come on. Let me think on that one. Come back to me on that one. I, no, I don't want you to make it up. <laughs> no, I, I, I want to know if there was did. something special that you and dad did when I was, you know, in my formative years. Well, I did a lot of, you're my boy, you're my little boy, 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 you're my boy, who's my boy, boy, boy. I did that. No. No, that's generic. That that could be any boy. That's not me. See, are there any buzzards still on the shit wagon out there? That's what I want to know. Any yeah, of them? Larry has three of them, which is kind of crazy. Sorry, Larry. <laughs> Where'd he get the shit wagon from? That's what I want to know. Right? He works in concrete. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I'm going to dive into your past for a little bit because I mention this place a lot, but you are a grad of the Rosebud Theater School. Am I, I right? I am. I am. I am. What is the name of your... It's not a degree, it's something fancier. I did get a diploma. So it's a four-year program, and after two years, you get a diploma. Um, But after four years, you get to be a member of the guild. So I am officially, I have an FRSA, which stands for Fellow of Rosebud School of the Arts. That's so fancy. I know. I'm a part of a guild. (laughs) I have a theater study diploma, which is a... Theater stud dip, which is what I call it. Sorry? Stud dip. Can you say that again? Theater stud dip. <laughs> That's how I feel studying theater. I'm a theater stud dip. <laughs> I think every graduating program of every institution should have some kind of like guild or uh, elder council uh, or orc yes. clan. You know what I mean? <laughs> Secret society. Even better. That's right. Section 16. I knew it was something about a fellow. I keep telling people that like you get at Rosebud, you get a fellowship of the Rosebud is what I would call it. Fellowship of the Rose is my new young adult uh, uh, dystopian novel. Oh, nice. <laughs> TYA. Awesome. They go on a quest. Go on a quest. <gasps> <gasps> quest Theater is a TYA company in Calgary. How, <laughs> man? Wait. How many other theater companies or names can we get in this conversation right now? Come on. I'll work them in. <laughs> Well, there, there would probably be some sort of sage in the quest for theater in Calgary. Well, you definitely have to go into the theater basement for that. Right. And take your lunchbox. Yep. But don't get vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> hey, guys. Griff- it's Griffin Cork here from the Breakfast Dish <laughs> Podcast. Some of, you, some of you may be wondering how you would get vertigo by going into the basement. And I'm, I'm here to say that I wasn't part of this bit and I don't approve it. It's opposite vertigo. I think you get vertigo. Like going downstairs, you'd get vertigo. People can get vertigo just standing up. It's true. It's true. My co-star, Daniel Fong, has a great story about vertigo when it's like calcium buildup in your ear. Yeah. And if it falls into your eardrum, you get instant vertigo. And this happened to him on stage in (gasps) Rosebud during a performance of Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat in which he was playing Joseph. Oh, oh my Lord. And then he couldn't stand I, up straight. Well, he he certainly tried because Daniel's quite the professional. Um, but I'll, I'll tell my side of the story because I, don't, I want Daniel to not feel like his, he's being blasted. You were in the, the show too? No, but I was in town and I got this text from somebody in the show that said, Daniel's puking all over the stage. Come quick. Because they just wanted me to watch. (laughs) They knew I would find it uh, not entertaining, but like intriguing what was happening. Um, But poor Daniel got very good during the show and they had to stop it. And luckily there were multiple people in the show who had played Joseph in other productions and knew the track well enough. So somebody stepped in for him that day, I'm pretty sure. Or multiple multiple people did? I don't know. Wow. It was a wild day in Rosebud, though. But the audiences, they just loved it. They were like, wow, live theater. This is what it's all about. <laughs> Talk about the challenges of being an emerging artist. Yeah. <laughs> and also, I thought you were going to I thought you were gonna say, luckily, there was multiple people in oh. the house that were doctors. <laughs> but you said, don't worry, the show went on fine. 
In the small prairie town of Hillview. In the center of town, Hillview's single traffic light shifts from red to green, which has no effect whatsoever as Main Street is, as usual, completely devoid of traffic. Bored teenagers use their modified hoverboards to sneak into other dimensions. An abandoned cityscape lives half buried in the sand. Welcome to the multiverse. It's dangerous. The entire right side of her body looks like... Uh, just a glitched out mess. It's stupid. And then I immediately uh, turn around and punch him. It's got parent groups in a panic. Just don't do it, okay? Hugs, not slugs. All right, <laughs> thank you. And it's the coolest thing ever. This is Slug Blaster. Well, your funeral and ours, I guess. And then Angus points and fires. There's an explosion, a burst of slime goes flying. Your reign of terror has come to an end. It, it kind of scrambles and glitches out. And you can see that this there's like a smoking crater where your ray gun hit. That's <laughs> sick. <laughs> Quantum Kickflip, a Slug Blaster actual play podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network. What's the thing that the National National Arts Center did? The the big grand acts of theater thing oh, during yeah. the pandemic? They would just like do these huge, huge theatrical things. That to me is like what uh, uh, like a, on maybe a smaller scale of like what Alberta Kitchen Party is or what was Verb Show? Yeah, a more sparkling version, version of ourselves. A more sparkling version mm-hmm. of ourselves. Uh, in Wonderland had a little bit of that to me of just like, hey, we're back. Let's just go bombastic. I'm in. Yeah. It. What do you want to do? Let's do it. Yeah, that was that was the process of Alberta Kitchen Party for sure. Like, let's just share some stories. <laughs> well, Kitchen Party makes me think if if you're a theater fan or lover, or if you haven't been under a rock, there's a show that came out of Canada a number of years ago called Come From Away, which is a show about when Newfoundland, Gander Newfoundland, welcomed uh, a lot of the diverted planes on 9-11 to land in their community and thousands and thousands of people came and everybody was like, come sleep on my bed, come eat my food. And it became like big parties in in the community center. So which reminds me of two winters ago, I think just before pandemic, a show was happening at Rosebud and the worst snowstorm ever happened during the night of the show. Like while everybody was in the theater, completely like, miles and miles of snow came. And Rosebud, if you don't know Rosebud, it's this destination theater. The theater is beautiful in this small town, town, Hamlet? Hamlet. Hamlet. Anyway, there's like 19 houses. I'm making that up. There's there's like very few permanent residents that are in the Hamlet itself. There's lots of people out on farms, I think. Take an honest guess, mom. I want you to take an honest guess to how many houses. Okay, 27. I think there's 27 houses. But anyway, 350 people are at the show and they can't get out of Rosebud. Like they seriously cannot get out. So everyone's like, come sleep in my basement. And then everybody went over to the cafe, apparently, and everybody brought their guitars and you had a kitchen party at the cafe, right? Yeah, it was it was brilliant. And like, it was wild too, because the storm happened while like, everybody got there. Okay, the storm hadn't happened yet. Yeah, they walked into the theater and our front of house manager came out for the pre-show chat and she said, hello, everybody, you won't be going home tonight. Uh, <laughs> there is ice covering the highways and we would really appreciate if you did not leave wow. the show. <laughs> and that's how she opened it. <laughs> hello, everybody, you won't be going home tonight. Lock the doors, yeah. release the hounds. <laughs> I think she came out at intermission and gave everybody an update. Like, if I haven't chatted to you yet, come and find me after the show. We have everybody has signed up to take a certain amount of people into their bed and breakfasts, into their houses. So we will find a place for you. But the cool thing was there was a choir that was visiting for that show. And we were doing the show Bright Star. Um, which hat was written by Steve Martin and Edie Brickell has this amazing song called the sun, sun is going to shine, which opens the second act. And that choir learned that song, which was, was why they were coming to see the show. Cause they know, knew that song and loved that song. So when we went and did our kitchen party at the cafe, we started playing that song and the choir was there and we all sang the song together. And the song's all about how the sun's going to come out and the clouds are going to roll away and everything's going to be okay. And it was just like, oh, I get goosebumps thinking about it. It's just I was just going to say, I am covered in goosebumps right now. Yeah. Just a moment of connection that like, you know, that that will never happen again, but so 
happy that I got to be a part of it. So yeah, wow. that was special. Super I special. loved reading that story on Facebook. Like just went, yeah, of course, that's what happened in Rosebud. Absolutely. Yeah. If you've been a part or adjacent to so many experiences like that, how do you not just fall in love with this industry? Like it would be so hard to not just be fully like head over heels. Like, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. I will do anything in my power for these magical, to get these magical theater moments again and again, even if, even if the industry's hard, even if I'm poor, even if, even if for these like moments of connection and love and happiness and joy that I get to share with people. Oh, it's, it makes it worth it tenfold. I'd do it in a million lifetimes. That's, that's how you and I felt, I think, during the other Josh Cohen, which never happened, which is the show you and I were in rehearsal for on March 15th. Well, March 12th, when Alberta went, <laughs> bye. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we all went back in on the 15th, I think, to do an archival of it. Our amazing sponsor, Bob Catella, was there and we did the show just for Bob. And we took an archival in the hopes that at some point we'd do it again. And Chris talked and said, well, we're going to leave the set up for a couple of weeks because they think it'll just be two weeks. <laughs> yes. We'll see you in two so weeks. Three months later, he's like, okay, we need help taking <laughs> the set down out of the vertigo space because it's still up there. Yeah, I felt that way. Just everybody playing an instrument. I got to play the shaky eggs. And you were great. At it. Oh, and the tambourine. And the tambourine. Yeah. I feel like there were more instruments that you played. Did you pick up an accordion? No. I lent my accordion that I own, one of three, and can't play to Trevor Lee, who was in the show. Right, he right, played right. my accordion. Yes. Or your accordion. No, not my accordion. I don't have an accordion. He played an accordion because mine's gigantic. I don't think that yeah. he would have played that one. Everybody in that show played more than one instrument, except for me and Kevin Cambridge, who was playing one of the Joshes. But everybody else was like, I remember doing the, we're in rehearsal. And Alex is like, you put down your guitar and you picked up a flute? No. Clarinet. Clarinet, that's right. Clarinet. And then you put it down and picked up the violin because you were learning the violin at the time. And I'm just like, I was enamored of everybody's talent. Can I ask how you got so good on so many instruments? Was music like a big part of yeah. you like growing up or is it like, was it all self-taught? Was there some song or musical that like inspired you to just like start learning? How did it happen? That's a good, that's a great question. I don't know if I have a, a specific answer. I knew I always loved music. Um, I actually like strongly considered just doing music um, for post-secondary, but I went to a school that had an amazing band program, William Aberhart, represent. And the kids in my year just were all fantastic. And I didn't think I could do it because they were so good. So I went and did acting because um, that was my thing. But when I was in Rosebud, Rosebud is really good at um, seeing little sparks in people and kind of turning them into a little flame. Um, and so I had a little ukulele that I would play um, and I got put on a musician team that kind of roves around the restaurant there and entertains people before the show and uh, just really enjoyed it. Had a really good time. I, I think the second time I did it, I was with uh, two of my classmates and Morris Ertman, who's the artistic director there, just happened to see us perform and we were just goofing off and being our usual selves. But I... It, he told me later that he saw that and he was like, oh, I think that needs to go on stage. And so he ended up finding a show that like we could have a woman's trio playing our own instruments on stage and and um, just being our, our fun, goofy selves. Um, and then that just like the, the introduction of actor, musician kind of shows really started there. And I was like, okay – what, how, how do I just get to be a part of more of this? Do I need to learn a new instrument? Okay, I'll pick up the banjo. Oh, you need me to play guitar? Well, sure, why not? Oh, piano? Yeah, yeah, I think I can do a little bit of piano. So it just really has become something that like, because I love these shows so much, I will do anything in my power to make 
it happened. And I, I say this, I said this in rehearsal a lot for Alberta Kitchen Party. Past Alex likes to make fun problems for present and future Alex. Um, <laughs> she really, she really is confident in future Alex's skills. Um, so sometimes, she says she can play instruments that she can't play in the hopes that she'll learn that instrument. Um, and it's a bit dicey sometimes when she turns into future Alex and has to start learning it. Uh, but I mean, it all turns out well in the end. Thank so. goodness for past That's, Alex. Okay. <laughs> and, and just to clarify, all this instrumental skill you have has been accrued by you just in the past, like, it's like six, seven years? Well, I did grow I like grew up playing piano and I was in band and I played clarinet, bass clarinet. Okay, uh, okay. And I did a lot of singing when I was uh, a kid. I was classically trained uh, in the Royal Conservatory. Um, so did a lot of like art song and opera and that kind of thing. Um, and then my voice teacher introduced me to Wicked and it had just come out when I was a kid. And I was obsessed. Daniel Fong. So Daniel Fong and I went to junior high together. And um, there's a bit in the show where we talk about our junior high experiences. And he brought in his yearbook for us to look at. And there are so many little hints about me liking Wicked and people's <laughs> grad quotes. <laughs> Uh, and I like I was I was absolutely obsessed, and that kind of turned me into the musical theater head that I Wait, am. Well, in, in other people's grad quotes, it was about you liking Wicked. <laughs> yes, well, you know when you're like a kid and you're like AC, <laughs> and then it's like a little quote about AC and what she was into. So it's like AC is wicked for life, or something like that. Have a wicked like, summer. Let's definitely hang exactly. out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're my friend for good. Yeah. I didn't realize that Daniel yeah. Fong and you went to junior high. Where did you go? H.D. Cartwright. Oh. And then you went to Aberhart for high school, yes. which is where Griffin went as well. Yeah. So was your high school theater teacher Marie Duamerol? Was she there when she you were there? She came in in my grade 12 year. I had Mrs. Jeunet before that and Mr. Waters, who I adored. So during the pandemic, I think it was during the pandemic, you – pivoted the word that I hate that everyone uses, but which actually describes what we artists did when we found other things we could do into teaching sound. Talk about the classes you taught online. Yeah, a little bit in, in January and February last year. Um, yeah, I just, I wanted to, to, I haven't done a lot of teaching and I wanted to. So I, uh, just was like, okay, let's, Let's uh, do a little class in GarageBand because it's a program that lots of people have. And it's a great introduction to a lot of elements of music production. Um, so I, it ended up being like four weeks over Zoom with each group. And I did two sessions of it. And we just got to make music together and really like my whole goal was just to make people excited about music production because I am of the opinion that we need more sound designers in theater. I'm always gutting for more people to get into sound design um, and especially women in sound design because it's a very – audio is a very male-dominated field. Um, so my whole goal was just to get people excited about it and then to make it not – to make it – easy to understand because there are a lot of terms and you could go deep right away. And when I was learning, there were a lot of things being thrown at me that I didn't get because it was just jargon. Um, so that was the goal. But at the end, they all made their own songs and we presented them for everybody and just like reveled in each other's beautiful creativity. And it, it, it was so lovely. I want you to do this for me because there's so many Facebook groups, you know, non-union actors of Calgary or, you know, I live in Edmonton and I do film, those kind of Facebook groups. I think there needs to be a Facebook group that is Alberta actors who also play instruments. Oh my because gosh. Yes. I'm I'm coming up on a project that involves that and I realize I know very few 
people other than you and the rest of the people in the kitchen, in the Alberta <laughs> kitchen party, who know how to also play instruments. Start that Facebook page, Alex. Do it. You, Damn it. That's a great idea. Right? We don't often give our guests homework, but this, <laughs> let's start this episode. I, and I'll do it, honestly. <laughs> All right. We've been teasing it long enough, Karen. You, you need to share how Alex is the mind behind one of my new favorite segments on the show. Okay. In the jingle, as you have told us and reminded us and we heard, and I love the phrase, tell me your dreams over bacon and eggs. And what we've been asking every one of our guests to do is to share the weirdest dream they've ever had, or the one you had last night, or a nightmare you had as a child that you've never forgotten, (laughs) or the kinds of dreams you normally have, any sort of nighttime REM sleep imagination things. If they don't have that, we usually say like, or tell us a a life aspiration. But we do want to hear about your dreams. And how we introduced this segment is I introduced a a nightmare that has terrorized me for about 10 years as like when I got it as a kid. So, so you are, there's a whole range of stuff you could bring up if you'd like. Gosh. Okay. I'm not really a dreamer, to be honest. Um, Or I am. But I don't write them down, and then then they're not useful to me, so they go away. Um, <laughs> my partner Conrad is the big dreamer, and I hear about their dreams every single morning. But <laughs> um, <laughs> and I love it. I should I should also say that, and I love it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I I I don't get pre show stress dreams. I get post show stress dreams. <laughs> so about a month from now, I will have a dream. And it will likely be a combination, not only of Alberta Kitchen Party, but of other shows that I have been a part of in the past, where we're remounting multiple of them. Like, it, it'll like be like Alberta Kitchen Party and Bright Star combined. Um, and Alex, you're on, and you should have been here a half hour ago. And the show's starting right now, and you need to drive from Rosebud to Calgary right now (laughs) and get here in 10 minutes. Um, But you will be playing the role of Anna Dalgleish, who is amazing on the drums in our show. So I will likely have this dream where I'm being asked to step into a drummer position, which is an instrument I do not play. And past Alex knows that future Alex does not want to learn how to play that instrument either. (laughs) Um, and it will be very stressful and I will have forgotten absolutely everything about the show. Um, and that will, yeah, like mark the date. April 5th is when I will have that dream. Yeah. Wow. And there you go, folks. If you've never heard of an actor's nightmare, that right there, that's what an actor's nightmare is. It is terrifying. But I I think that's like the final, it's like the post-mortem at the end of the show. That's how I know the show is done. Well, here's the postmortem to the breakfast dish, and that's how you know that we're wrapping up, is the breakfast dish is part of the Alberta Podcast Network, locally grown, community supported. I've said it before, and I'll say it again, the intro music that you just heard and the outro music that you're about to hear has been composed by Alex Kalman. All graphic design for the breakfast dish has been done by Morgan Ermter. Karen, what else is going on this week? I found this online, and now I'm going to buy all of this band's music. It's a band called The Real Mackenzies. They're playing at a pub in Grand Prairie called Better Than Fred's on March 18th. And if you um, if you go to Mozart.com, M-O-Z-A-A-R-T.com, you can find the information that you need and buy tickets, etc. But I listened to the music. They've got their tracks on there, and I I have to buy everything that this band has ever released. So uh, March 18th, please go to Better Than Fred's in Grand Prairie and see the real Mackenzie's. I thought you were promoting a band that the estate of Mozart was (laughs) supporting, (laughs) which is a huge deal. Can we talk about that if that happened? Also, do you think there's a restaurant called Fred's and then there's a restaurant called Better Than Fred's? My husband used to work at a restaurant in Toronto called Fred's Not Here. What's up with Fred? I'm going to start a sandwich shop, and it's just going to be called Subway Sucks Come Here. (laughs) Is that allowed? Probably not. Why not? 
Oh, no, the lawyers for Subway are at the door now. And we're sued. Understood. Got it. Alex Cowan, thank you very much for joining us on The Breakfast Dish. Oh, thank you for having me. It's it's a bucket list off. Yay. Checked off. Boom. <laughs> we are uh, going to ask you one final question. But before we do, do you want to give us the brass tacks of Alberta Kitchen Party and, and where people can go to find out more and how long you guys are running and all that business? Yes. Okay. So Alberta Kitchen Party is happening at the Martha Cohen Theater in the Arts Commons in Calgary. And we run until March 19th. And you can get tickets on Alberta Theatre Project's website. Just Google Alberta Theatre Projects. You'll find us. As we wrap up this episode of The Breakfast Dish, we like to ask one question that Karen just makes up on the spot and we didn't have any planning around it and it may or may not have anything to do with what we talked to you about previously, but here we go. Karen, three, two, one. Okay, you invite all the people in Rosebud over to your house for a kitchen party. And you have to make them breakfast because it's a morning kitchen party. What are you cooking for everybody? Oh, okay. Um, tons of coffee. Rosebud lives on coffee. Lives on <laughs> not Duncan, but uh, lots of espresso for Morris with with a dollop of honey for me. Um, and we'll share that. Uh, my best friend Lauren. She'll just have some coffee and some toast. Uh, and some fruit, lots of fresh fruit. We're all about the fresh fruit. I would get Jeannie Snyder to make some beautiful homemade bread. Um, yeah. So I think they've gotten into sourdough out in Rosebud lately and local honey. It has to be local honey. Mm-hmm. So we've got quite the collection of beekeepers in that town. I'm a big fan of the John McIver honey. Ooh, nice, nice. I usually go for the Moshbacher's honey, uh, which they don't live in town anymore, but they were the ones who got everybody. They're the OG beekeepers. They got everybody obsessed with it. So yeah, just lots of locally stuff. (laughs) And this episode of The Breakfast Dish has been brought to you by local honey producers of Rosebud. Local honey producers, the OG beekeepers, (laughs) and don't you forget it. Come correct, show respect. Yes. This has been The Breakfast Dish.